So there's one thing I should still mention, and that's the use of controls. The use con of controls is easier to explain if I do this by another blot. So let me try and draw this for you, if you don't mind. So this is now another blot, meaning that you took your two different samples, samples A and sample B. And you ran them on a gel. And the gel, whatever you were separating on this uh, agarose gel, you were transferring to nitrocellulose and then you hybridize this piece of nitrocellulose against the probe that will pick up your gene of interest. So this is the band that will correspond to your gene of interest or to your favorite gene, YFG, your favorite gene. So as in the examples before, sample B will have less, yeah, so you have a lower amount. So if you then subject this to uh, some kind of um, quantitation, you can do that by, for instance, counting the, the radioactive um, decay that, that occurs in, uh, in both uh, lanes if you have used the radio labeled probe. In any case, if you quantitate this, you may come up with a ratio of 8 to 1. All right, you think that your sample number A contains much more, eightfold more, of your favorite DNA as compared uh, to, the, uh, to the sample number B, your favorite RNA, I should say, as your sample number B. But now you're a very good student and that means you don't believe your results so easily, rather that you now will hybridize your blood to a different sample. And this is uh, a, an RNA that you don't think will be affected by your con uh, experimental conditions, so I call it the control. And this control gene will look like that. So you still get a somewhat stronger band in your sample A. So let's assume the ratio is now 2 to 1. Huh, so how could that be? Well, I guess the most reasonable, the most reasonable explanation is that in your sample A you had a higher amount of global RNA. So maybe some of the RNA got lost in sample B and you retrieved a bit more of your RNA and subsequently a bit more cDNA in your sample A. And that's something that happens very frequently, even if you try to work very carefully. So the conclusion from that is that your sample A contained more of any RNA and you would expect more of an amplification product from any cDNA that you retrieve from that RNA. So you somehow want to correct for that. So how would you correct for that? Well, that's again fairly easy. Because what you will reasonably assume is that your real ratio of A over B isn't quite 8, but rather that the ratio of A over B is actually 4. So what you really have done is to calculate the ratio for your favorite gene here, and you divided this by the ratio obtained for your control gene. And that's what gave you the accurate number here. So if you allow me to put this more generally now is that the corrected ratio corrected that refers to your favorite gene is equal to the ratio that you measured A over B 
for your favorite gene. Divide it by the ratio of A over B for your control. So it sounds trivial, but this is very important. That the corrected ratio is a ratio of ratios that you have actually measured. The true ratio between your samples reflecting the differential expression of your favorite gene is equal to the ratio that you measured for your favorite gene divided by the ratio that you measured for your control gene. In this case, it's an eightfold ratio divided by a twofold ratio and that's the fourfold uh, ratio that you actually obtained by applying the experiment. So how would this now apply to quantitative PCR? Well, let's try this again. So what we are trying to do here, again, is to calculate the ratio of the two samples referring to your favorite gene but we want to correct this with the control. So what we do again is now to run quantitative PCRs for your favorite gene in order to find out its ratio, but then we design another pair of primers to amplify a control gene and we are assuming that this control gene is not affected by our experimental conditions, it's just affected by any perturbations in the RNA preparation. So it's the ratio that we obtain for our control gene. So if we now calculate this, we have learned in the previous lecture that the ratio that we measure for our favorite gene is 2 to the power of the delta CT value that we obtain for our favorite gene. And this is divided by 2 to the power of the delta CT value that we obtain for our control gene. So now if you use a little bit of mathematics, this is nothing else but 2 to the power of the delta CT and favorite gene minus the delta CT value that we obtain for the control gene. Simple mathematics. The ratio of two powers equals 2 to the power of those differences. So it's a difference between delta CTs and I told you already that delta stands for differences and that's why we can abbreviate this by 2 to the power of delta delta CT. So this is nothing else but the delta delta CT method to determine the ratio or the corrected ratio of our favorite gene. So we get the corrected ratio by not only calculating 2 to the power of the delta CT value, but instead calculating 2 to the power of the difference between two delta CTs, and that's what we call 2 to the power of delta delta CT.